Um, okay, so let's move on to a slightly different so topic again, and I want to talk about data breaches and being resilient against them. Um, there's a lot of technologies to protect against data breaches, but I think people are starting to realize that it's really important to build that protection into your storage foundation itself. And in that respect, is there anything that the IBM Flash System 5000 brings to the party? Uh, absolutely, Andrew, and I think you bring a wonderful uh, point. Uh, often on your channel, we have spoken of our zero trust uh, framework. But this uh, is a reality. I think given this pandemic, we have seen a, a lot more cyber attacks. And, and to say some data points, the average cost of remediation for any particular client who has gone through a, a cyber attack is up close to about $1.5 million. And even worse is that it takes up to 230 days to recover from any cyber attack. We at IBM are, are proud that we are working with NIST on something was what we call the zero trust framework. No tool alone can solve uh, or help you solve a cyber attack or a ransomware attack. It's a mix of tools and processes. And this whole zero trust framework leverages identity and data. So fundamentally, it is about zero trust is about getting the right access to the right person at the right time for the right data. And, and when you look at this whole, uh, whole process, uh, there are two important things or use case uh, which, which kind of stand out here. One is preparing yourself, protecting yourself against a threat of ransomware. And the second piece is detecting, responding, and recovering from a ransomware attack. From a storage perspective and a flash perspective, we are focused on the second use case. That is, how do we help organizations to recover in minutes post a ransomware attack? And what I would like to highlight here is that the infrastructure you have for data resiliency is just not sufficient for cyber resiliency. You know, so you've got to treat these two differently. And the way we have gone about is what we propose as uh, what we propose is something called a cyber vault, which helps you recover from any cyber attack in minutes. So fundamentally, the way it works is cyber vault work produces. Uh, along with safeguard copy, immutable copies. Uh, it produces immutable copies. So once it uh, it works closely again with QRadar, which is our threat detection software. So once uh, any threat of attack is detected via QRadar, it alerts uh, our safeguard copy and flash copy manager. Based on that, it creates an immutable copy, checks it whether for any uh, malware, any, any corruption identified, and then mounts it back uh, to begin your uh, begin your production process. So what you can see here is that you are in a position to recover in minutes uh, than in hours. So we can create up to 15,000 immutable copies. And the best part is that they don't take uh, storage space because they are logical volume copies. We again are uh, is probably the only vendor who had this on our high end storage. Now have got it even to our mid ranges and entry level storages and are addressing this issue of ransomware on production data vis-a-vis -vis a lot of solutions out there which try to handle ransomware towards the backup data. Right? So this is what I think is, is very unique uh, as a part of our zero trust approach uh, to offer on our clients uh, Cyber Vault and Safeguard Copy. Yeah, Akul, the thing that I really picked up uh, from what you were just discussing was when you said that no one tool is going to solve all your cybersecurity issues. So that really does point to the fact that you need to build resilience into every aspect of your infrastructure, your storage or your foundational storage being one aspect. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, I've got one more question for you today, and it's more generically about cloud, uh, because obviously storage does transcend and traverse cloud. So as companies are looking into starting or continuing on their hybrid and multi-cloud journeys, what part does IBM play in that journey for your clients? Yeah, so I, uh, I would like to put a forth a saying here, which, which goes that there is no AI without IA. There is no AI without an information architecture being in place. And I would like to give you a simple example here of about two years back, we had Ed Bastian, who's the CEO of Delta Airlines at one of our think forum, and he spoke about it. He said, Delta Airlines had had various data for about maintenance of their fleet, about crew flight time, etc. 
But as it was in silos, they were not able to make use of it. So what they did is once they started putting together an information architecture or a data architecture in place, uh, over a period of a few years, they saw the amount of flight cancellations come down from 55,000 to 55. So, so this is just to give you an idea of having your information architecture in place before you go on any data modernization and monetization journey. We've again proved this multiple times uh, with our clients. Uh, for example, uh, you talk about Met UK, which is which is which is today forecasting accurate and weather data in a, in a quick manner running on our storage. Uh, you can talk you can talk about the University of Pittsburgh, which is analyzing tons of clinical data, given them a scalable architecture, and thus helping uh, the overall medical fraternity. Uh, you can talk of AMRC, which is uh, using AI again uh, to, to, to check uh, in real time, visualize parts and help reduce waste. Another example again out here is 49 of the top 50 banks run on IBM storage, right? So, so this is just to give you an example of how uh, we are going about solving a client's issue and how storage is an important part of that journey. Just to put it in a nutshell again, uh, what we are of the opinion is in, in this world, hybrid, hybrid data cloud is the platform, data is the fuel, and AI is the accelerator. So it's kind of all three coming out together, uh, is, that's what it is. Yeah, thanks again, Akil. And, um... You know, I, I like it when you refer to an IA, yeah, information architecture, because I think that really encapsulates it. When you think about storage, it's no longer just about disks and hardware and, and, and arrays. It really is about building uh, an information architecture. So that was a really nice point to, to finish on. But before we do go and before we say goodbye to you, is there anything else you'd just like to say before we wrap up? Thank you, Andrew, for having us here. And it's definitely a pleasure to be here and, and discuss our viewpoint on, on storage. We at IBM definitely understand the journey which our clients are going through. And we've shared enough, numerous examples of where we have helped them on this journey. My request to all of you would be to get onto our storage digital platform, a Google IBM Storage Smarts. So you land up on our platform or contact any of your IBM representative, any of your business partners, and, and look at how can we help you get on this journey. Thank you. Thanks again, Akil. Really appreciate you spending the time with us this morning and looking forward to speaking to you again in the future. Uh, and if you would like to find out anything more about some of the subjects we've spoken about or IBM's Flash System 5000, please click on the link below.